The phrase Middle Ages is used to describe Europe between the fall of Rome in 476 CE and the beginning of the Renaissance in the 14th century. This term, however, implies like it's an insignificant era without remarkable accomplishments. But today scholars articulated that the Middle Ages is just as vibrant and complex, and it's more fitting to be called the Medieval Period. What was life during this period in history like? By the 5th century, the Roman army was weak and could no longer fight off enemies. When the empire government broke down, people left the towns and the cities. The people of Rome sought help to military leaders and the Catholic Church. The government grew strong again under Charlemagne's rule as the Pope made him the emperor. But when Charlemagne died, Western Europe was left without a good leader. The Middle Ages was a time between the fall of the Roman Empire and the beginning of the modern world. Medieval life centered around the church, which held worship services and took care of the sick, poor, elderly, and orphans. Novels and church owned most of the land. This is where feudalism and manualism started in order to protect their land. Under feudalism, a noble gave land to a lesser noble called vassal. The vassal agreed to protect the more powerful noble with knights, soldiers, and weapons. Under manorialism, peasants live on a lord's manor wherein peasants farm the land and give the crops to the lord. In return, the lord protected the peasants. Peasants live in small homes with dirt floors and straw roofs. They often kept animals in their homes. New waves of farming began by the middle of the 11th century and more crops were grown in Western Europe. Fewer farmers were needed. As a result, people moved to towns. They bought property and started businesses. Later, guilds were formed, a special group that protected workers' rights. The guilds set wages and prices and also settled arguments. Just when we thought the medieval ages is getting better, a striking event occurred. Between 1347 and 1350, a mysterious disease known as the Black Death or the Bubonic Plague wiped out over 20 million people in Europe, which is 30% of the continent's population. It was primarily deadly in cities, where it was impossible to prevent the transmission of the disease from one person to another. Black Death, a multi-century pandemic, caused widespread death in Asia and Europe. It was believed to start in China in 1334, spreading along trade routes and reaching Europe in the late 1340s. The plague started in Europe in October 1347, when 12 ships from the Black Sea docked at the Sicilian port of Messina. Most sailors aboard the ships were dead, and those who were alive were covered in black boils that oozed blood and pus. Victims often get high fever, chills, vomiting, diarrhea, terrible aches and pains, and then death. Sometimes, victims could go to bed feeling healthy and be dead by the morning. The plague was the product of humans' interconnection as they traveled to different places for trading. In addition, the rising urban population and lack of medical knowledge aggravate the situation. The plague killed an estimated 25 million people, almost a third of the continent's population. The Black Death lingered on for centuries, particularly in cities. Outbreaks included the Great Plague of London from 1665 to 1666, in which 70,000 residents Today, scientists know the plague was caused by a bacillus called Yersinia pestis, which travels through the air and can also be contracted through the bite of an infected. 
Because of all the debt brought by the plague, the necessity to find a solution resulted to innovations. Europe became the standard bearer for culture, discovery, and technology for the next few hundred years. The Black Death does not only brought medical advancement, but also greatly influenced how economy works. Before the Black Death happened, during the 1330s, although it was a prosperous period for Europe and bankers were powerful, farmers were taken advantage and taxes were high. However, one by one, bankers collapsed as the plague spread and Europe population crashed from 90 to 60 million. The decrease in population increased the wages of peasants. The Black Death encouraged innovation of labor-saving technology, leading to higher productivity. Both prices of resources and peasant wages increased. Greater value was placed on the bill of exchange change and the use of government-issued paper money also became common during the medieval era. Promissory note payable were provided on demand, replacing the need to carry around quantities of precious metals which could be easily lost or stolen. Some of the notable advancement in accounting happened during the medieval era. The Italian trading period sees sophisticated accounting systems developed within banking houses. Formal and systematic trading can be seen during the medieval age. The practice of partnership, existence of loan contracts, maritime insurance, fair letters, and the use of credit was prevalent. The explosion of commercial credit required a system of recording. Double entry bookkeeping is discovered. Double-entry bookkeeping is the outcome of the need to meet the changing necessities of trade and is still being used in the present. This resulted to a more formal and systematic way of recording making it easier to give trader information about their assets and liabilities without delay. The double-entry bookkeeping was first witnessed in the ledgers of Giovanni Farolfi and Company, a firm of Florentine merchants. Although Antino Manucci was the inventor of the double-entry bookkeeping, Luca Pascioli was regarded as the father of double-entry bookkeeping who also advised the computation of periodic profit and the closing of books. An accounting manuscript that survived from this period is the Domesday Book, a document that includes all real estate and taxes due to Arabic numerals were also being used as a result of trade, with the Near East allowing columns of numbers to be added and subtracted. Noted cords of different lengths and colors, called kipu, were used to keep accounting records during the Inca Empire that spanned throughout the 11th and 14th centuries. The earliest evidence of business bookkeep in Florence, France was revealed by the bank ledger fragments of 1211 and with the development of accounting in Tuscany, Italy during the 13th century as shown in the account books or extracts. The system was primitive. Accounts were not related in any special way and the balancing of account was lacking. The emergence of double entry itself was first witnessed in the ledgers of Renifini and Brothers and Giovanni Farolfi and Company. Other innovations during the Black Death was the sundial, which provided a much more accurate sense of timekeeping, order, and routine, which is more important in business. The sundial evolved into an hourglass, and later on, a mechanical clock, which is the Virgin scale. The Middle Ages may be a struggling period, but it wasn't just dark. Yes, there was a lot of tragedies, wars, deaths, illnesses, and punishments. But these were essential to the rebirth of Europe. Discoveries and innovations in accounting also transpired, which made the era a fascinating one.